Why did my game freeze up? Oh my god, I'm doomed. My game is frozen. What has happened here? Whoa, hello. That's insane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Train Sim World, where we're about to drive the 2P21 Reading to London Paddington. This is literally the reverse of the last mission, but supposedly it takes like, what, three minutes shorter, and we got 10,300 AP. It looks like it's still snowing and welcome to Reading and it is only 7.34 in the morning. So it, it looks kind of dark out there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our night headlights on. I'll come back to that in a minute. We're going to turn on our TPWIS. Oh my gosh. TPWSIS. We're going to turn that to normal. We're going to make sure our DSD is also normal. The rest of these should be set to normal. The only other one we need to turn on is our AWS behind us. And you notice I instinctively pressed Q for that because I didn't turn on the master key just yet and I didn't put the reverter to forward, which was to turn that annoying sound right off. Our first stop is to stop at Twyford. So we're going to go ahead and put uh, throttle three. We're going to go ahead and turn on the gauge dimmer there and the cab light. Where is our cab light? There's our cab light and our train light behind us. So our wonderful passengers here can at least see what's going on. I feel bad for them. They were just sitting in the dark for the longest of time. Let's contact the singular. Of course, the singular says proceed to single indicate. We still have snow out here in wonderful Reading. So we're going in the opposite direction. Thankfully, we only have a three car setup again but it's not actively snowing. So that's kind of a good thing. We are gonna stop in Twyford in about 4.8 miles. Let's see what our itinerary actually says. So first stop is Twyford, second stop is Maidenhead, then Taplow, Burnham's, Lau, West Drayton, Hayes Harlington, Ealing Broadway, and finally London Paddington. And we're supposed to do all this in one hour. I don't exactly know if that's accurate or not, it claimed eight minutes and eight hours and 29 minutes. Is that even what that says? Does that say eight hours and 29 minutes? I don't know. Yeah, so despite the cold, I don't think I need to use the windscreen demeister. I'm just going to play it safe and I'm going to kind of see how that goes. It, I think we're heading towards evening time. I can't really tell. It, I mean, it, it looks dark, but I don't know if that's because there's a major storm here that's cr contributing to that. But I'm just going to assume it's nighttime mode, and that is why we have the headlight turn on the nighttime mode. By the time we get there, it's going to be 8 o'clock anyways, right? That's just the way this game works. So what we're going to do here, while we're rolling along, we're going to be talking about a few things as we go along. And what did I say I was going to come back to? Oh, I did say I was going to come back to TPWISS. Ah, I keep saying it wrong. Why? The TPWSIS. The goal of that, of course, is to make sure our train properly stops in proper places. So as we head to Twyford, for example, there may be another network or turbo ahead of us. There may be these wonderful AWSs that we roll over them. It's mostly designed to tell that, hey, you're awake and pay attention, right? And it's key that you turn the safety system on if you don't want to crash into another network or turbo in front of you, or if you don't want to pass the single at danger, which would be kind of terrible. So I'm kind of wondering, honestly, if I turned off the cab lights, can I see better out there? It feels like I could see a little bit better if I do this. And maybe for all you, all you folks at home, you could probably see better this way. What I could do is turn on my favorite light, the reading light. It does absolutely nothing for me here. It does absolutely nothing for my passengers out there. I mean, seriously, if I turned off their lights for a second, which one is their light? This one, this one, there it is. If I turn off their light, there is no reading light. So where is the reading light, folks? Sorry, no one knows where it is. By the way, we will be nice to them. We'll turn back on their train lighting. Everything will be okay that way. Folks, remember your networker turbos. They can only go 90 miles an hour. They should not go any faster than 90 miles an hour. This is going to be key for you guys driving this because we want to at least follow the rules of the road and we want to follow the rules of the rail and it will mean our networker turbo will be late by the time we get to London Paddington, which is really unfortunate that it happens every time I play this. A networker turbo is not going to be early unless you overspeed the networker turbo. With that said, we're going to be stopping and every time we stop, it's at least a two minute wait, at least give or take a minute. Because of that, that contributes to our lateness and the fact that it takes so long for a network or turbo to kind of catch up to speed that by the time we get the speed that we're looking for, I'm already having to throw the throttle down and we're having to go backwards with our throttle. It should be relatively easy to slow down the network or turbo as we head into Twyford. 
I am going to try with just throttle one. I think we could just slow down really easily with throttle one being 700 meters away or 700 yards or whatever it is. We should be able to get down to at least 50 by the time we get there. And if we need to go to number four, we'll go to number four. But I think we could do this completely on number one. Maybe not. We'll probably have to bump it up to number two. But yeah, for the most part, we should be able to do this fairly well on number one. All right, folks, I'm not going to try to overshoot the platform here. So we're going to... We're going to slam our emergency brakes just a touch, just to get us to slow down a little bit more here, because I feel like I'm going to overshoot the platform a little bit. This is actually nice. I think this might be the first mission I've done outside. I don't remember doing a mission outside at night. I was like, well, first mission outside. I've done plenty of missions outside. Just this happened to be the first one that I'm doing at night. Am I going to overshoot it? I am going to overshoot it by just like nothing. I did it. Oh my God, I did it. That was amazing. Open the left door. Open the left door. That was so cool. I can't believe the emergency brake worked for me that well. When I was getting here, this is actually kind of neat. Look at how lit up this station is. And it's not because of these lights right here lighting up the board thing, building a better railway, or even the fact that this light is lighting barely anything. It's not even the fact that it says disruption to the line. They actually acknowledge all of the disruption work that's been happening here that I've been mentioning about every single year on Christmas. Every single year, the train gets disrupted so badly, you can't even do anything around here half the time, right? But just amazing how bright this is. You can see everything. Nothing should be this bright. This should not be this many customers coming out of this station going from my train to there. That is insane how many people are getting off this train. And look at the train. It's completely full. Nobody actually got on. What the heck, people? What the heck? Alrighty, as the door is closed, next stop it's going to be Maidenhead. Let's go ahead and get ourselves Throttle 3 and rolling up as we head on out. If you were happen to be on the station like this, you would probably watch your networker turbos nice and easy move forward so much like this and then probably catch up a little speed and zoom its way all the way off the screen it's just wonderful to watch this not only that can you also stay here on the station you can train spot the other train ferrying passengers in the other direction this was probably the other train that we drove actually that's not true because we drove in the daytime sure I'd like to ask you a question. Next stop, folks, Maidenhead in 6.5 miles. In the meantime, there are plans to build a $100 million rail depot. Just a couple months ago in March, the minister for the rail line visited Shipley to announce that Crossley Evans site would be transformed from a scrapyard into an electric train care depot. So what does this mean for everybody riding the trains? It means more disruption, more rail shutdown, more line shutdown. It's insane that you all in the UK do not have consistent rail lines that run consistently. In fact, I feel like you guys have more shutdown than you have running trains. That's just my opinion right now, coming as an American, not knowing anything about the UK rail system. The facility itself is going to bring a lead night job to the town of Shipley. And it's intended to be completed in 2027. Depending on when you see this video, it could be 2027 and this facility will be done. You can look it up on a map. If you cannot look it up on a map because it's not done and you don't see anything called Chipley Train Care Center, I have a picture just for you what this is intending to look like and also a picture of what it used to look like. So depending on where it is in the process, you're going to either see a completed facility or a pile of dirt. The goal of this is to actually take the time to repair electric trains, maintain them, and also store them in Chipley, rather than taking them all the way to the Neville Hill Depot, or Depot as you might say in the UK. Neville Hill Depot in East Leeds, which will actually temporarily be shut down. Why? Why will it be shut down? You already know the answer because of the upcoming Transpennine route that's going to be worked on in the area. So yes, we're building a new building because we're shutting down the old building because we're building another new building. This is the UK rail folks. It's a wonder why I don't see more construction just lining the lines here in the snow. But you know why? Because it's winter, right? Because they're already in the middle of construction on either end of this rail line. When Neville Hill reopens, the intent is to leave the electric train depot in Shipley. Network Rail has submitted plans for the facility to Bradford Council with impression showing the, essentially the scale of the development and, and what they intend to do. 
The building will include a 148.5 meter by 41.9 meter maintenance building. That is a very exact measurement. I mean, why not just round up and make it 149 by 142? Wait, I said that wrong. 149 by 42. Wouldn't that be a little bit better? That's probably why they have the five. It's just easier to stay. An underframe cleaning facility. In other words, the facility that's going to wash the bottom of your train because of all the dirt and grime that gets on it. And it's also going to include a carriage wash machine and a gatehouse building. What more can you ask for, folks? When they turned in the application, it was the idea to create an improved depot and train care facilities for the electric feet serving the Workdale and Airedale lines. And the facility that's currently in Neville Hill is actually considered near capacity or almost, almost over capacity. And what this means, it's, it's Neville Hill also is not centrally located to serve the various routes. And so what they're looking for is a rail line that can service the route in an effective way that makes more sense being centrally located. Therefore, the feasibility study looked at a variety of alternative locations and decided that Chipley was the most suitable in meeting the criteria for the new depot facility. We're about 1.7 miles away from Maidenhead. You probably already noticed I turned off my throttle. So this is a, probably a good time to, I don't know why I hit brake hold. I didn't want to hit that one. Why am I even hit? Where is the brake hold on this button? What is this button? Brake hold. I gotta find out what brake hold is. What, what is brake hold? Well, that's okay. I don't know where it is right now. I'm not going to worry about it. Oh my gosh, we got, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I got so scared. I saw that 75 miles an hour and I was like 500 yards out, but it turned out I have a whole mile to stop. So I'm okay. Wow. I got distracted by the brake hold button. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> All right, with us about 500 yards out from Maidenhead, we are nice and easily slowing to a stop. I don't actually know if I made it to the first one. Did I actually make it to the first one? I think I did. No, I was already late. That's funny. I still managed to get late. So I'm already late here too. What the heck? How is it possible I'm late just trying to go in this direction? This direction, I should have been at least early going to Slough, but what in the world? Did, did I just like talk too much or something? I always take the extra time to blow the horn. Maybe I'm so used to American Rail doing this sort of thing, but I'm, oh, I'm used to doing that. Just blow the horn, let people know that we're here because, you know, it is dark. Can't really see anything despite these stations being lit up like Christmas trees. You really can't see what's going on, so you might as well take the extra time to blow the horn, let people know what's up and then take your stop. It looks like we're actually gonna make this stop pretty well. I'm kind of impressed right now how well I did this. I stopped pretty early. That was what, like a mile or so off? That was not bad. Emergency brake for the last of it, that was perfect. Look at that. 218, of course, because we are late already at Maidenhead. What the world's going on here, folks? This train is already headed back to Reading. Goodbye, folks. We'll see you later. Let's train spot them and watch how many millions of people come out of these dead worker turbos. I guarantee you, if we count the number of people that are coming out of this train, there's gotta not be enough seat for these people to fit. I mean, look, look at how insane this is. The train is, this one here in particular is kind of empty. This one here actually was pretty full. Like, okay, I admit it, this one here was pretty full. Where'd you get the cup of Java, sir? Where did you get the cup of Java? I gotta know where to buy it. I wanna know. So folks, I gotta tell you something kind of funny. Look at this. Look at this. So lock the doors. Lock the left doors. I am currently inside the train. I'm currently inside the train, but I'm not inside the train as a person. I'm actually inside the train as a camera. Did you know you can accidentally lock your camera inside the train? It is kind of funny because this is camera two right here. This is camera three. I can't get camera three out of this, at least until I get to Taplow in 1.8 miles. Hopefully I remember to take my camera out because it's kind of funny that I can actually stand here with camera three. It's almost like I'm just going along for the ride. I'm actually pretending to be a passenger, but you can also do this to pretend to be a guard. So, you know, you can do this sort of thing, right? And then you go in here and you press the guard button a couple of times, and then you come back out to camera three. You could do the thing with the doors. And so Train Sim World did make this extremely convenient to be able to play the role of a guard and a driver at exactly the same time. Who knew you could do this? There goes our high-speed train fluffing up the landscape with the snow. We're about to stop here in Taplau, and all I have to do at this point really just lay off the throttle and just let my train coast along, even though it's not downhill. We'll just kind of let the train coast along. I'm still trying to figure out what in the world is this brake hold button for. It doesn't turn anything on when I'm like this. I kind of wonder if it's for when I take off. 
and I start to use the train to go forward. I think that's what it's for because then I can hold the brake on as I throttle up. I think that's what that's for. And I feel like that's very much the same as a compress the compressor speed up button. However, I don't have a compressor speed up button here. I just know it's just kind of kind of chilly here. So we're going to turn on a little bit of heat. I just realized my fan's not on. What is this one here? That says water on, stop cock, water off. Apparently this train has water in it. If you didn't know that, you'd know that now. Folks, I'm gonna try this. I seriously am gonna try this. I don't know if I can make it in time. <laughs> this is going to be really hard to try this from inside the train, but I think I can do it. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be ambitious here and I know I'm going really slow right now, but oh my God, I'm going way too slow. Wow, okay, I can't do it. This is not the easiest thing. I'm trying to do this from inside the train and seeing if I can actually stop this train in a reasonable pace without overshooting the platform. Can I do it, folks? I don't know. If you think I can do it, you gotta give me a like and subscribe and leave me comments for this because it's possible that I could probably play the role of guard as I'm stopping my train. Oh my God, was that tap Lau? That was tap Lau. Oh my God. Oh my God, stop, 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 stop train. I was like, that was top low. Come on, come on, come on, come on, right there. Yes, I think I could do it. I think I could do it, folks. You know it's gonna happen. We're 45 yards away, what in the world? Top low is much bigger than it looks. But this is actually what it looks like driving on a train, trying to stop your train in, what is it, 12 yards or whatever it is, nine yards. I think I can get it. I think I can get it. We're going a little slow. These guys are like, what's going on? The train keeps moving. Why does the train keep moving? Where is the train going, folks? We did it! Yay! Unlock the left doors. I can finally free my man from inside the camera. <laughs> Open the door, please. Open the door. Open the door. Hi, everybody. Welcome aboard. Come on in and let's get on the train. Let's get moving. Hello. You two must be twins. And you two must be twins. And you three must be twins. Alrighty, folks. Back inside the engine. We're going to go ahead and lock the left doors. I think the brake hold button, the point of the brake hold button is actually if I turn on brake hold now, I release the brake and then I put throttle up. I, that's exactly what it's for. There we go. So that gives me the chance to rev up my engine so I don't roll down the hill, so to speak. That was the point of it. It makes sense now. I get it. What's going on with this train? It's moving. But it's not moving. My throttle is dead. Okay, I broke my throttle. What in the world? Fine, we're just going to turn this off. We're going to turn this on. And we're going to go ahead and get the throttle. There we go. I broke my train. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I broke my train. As I was saying, the feasibility study was designed to identify locations. And it eventually said the Chipley was the most suitable in meeting the criteria for the new depot facility. And the depot was to give day-to-day -day railway servicing, maintenance and stabling of trains associated with the Northern franchise. And you're gonna eventually see the class 331, the class 333 electric multiple units used on the Airedale and Warpdale route utilizing the facility. As of today, if you were to go out there, you would actually see the land being cleared of the scrapyard operation. Once the scrapyard is completely gone, the basic track work and associated civil engineering works will be established. So now is the time between 2024 and 2027 to go out there and train bot construction work, right? See these guys doing construction work? They're the go, right? They're the ones. By the way, I did read that if you do crossings like this, that's about the right time to turn on the horn. You probably should be turning on the horn when you're doing crossing work, at least anything going over crossing. But it's really hard to tell on the Great Western because the crossings really aren't here. They're mostly elsewhere, and so you really wouldn't use them all that much on Great Western. There's a couple of spots, but it's really hard to catch them. I just happened to catch them here because we were going so slow, I was able to see them. The depot is intended to be operational for 24 hours every day, literally five days a week, five days of the week and weekend. It's anticipated that night two staff full-time will be employed at the site with normal operation comprising of four different ship teams which average shift attendance of up to 28 people on site at any one time. Which isn't a bad deal, folks. That is a fantastic deal. If you're looking for a job, you want to get a job on the railroad, head over to Shipley. You might have a chance to score a new position. With that said, we're stopping in Burnham. We have 300 yards out. Let's just quickly blow our horn. Uh, one of the things I'm really enjoying about Train Sim World, just the fact that I can have a little bit of fun, little quirks like the camera, Little quirks like trying to, oh my God, why am I not stopping? Why am I not stopping? I'm totally gonna overshoot this one, am I? 
Oh, why is this happening to me? Why? Break hold. Maybe that will do it? Break hold? Oh, it's stopping! Yay! I did it! And look, right before the S, the S is right there. Car stop. I did it. Yay. Unlock the right door. We're just gonna bring this down to break one. I don't know what's going on here half the time. Did those lights just turn off on me? Is it because it's daytime? It's saying that it's daytime. I think right now it's daytime. It's hard to tell because the lights went off. I could keep the light the way it is for one more stop just to play it safe. I do learn that nighttime mode, by the way, the angles on the light, I was like, am I even there? I was like, God, the angles on the light are actually different. And so one, the daytime mode creates more dazzling effect on driver. Although this one seems to be pretty bright and reflecting all the people there. Nighttime mode, on the other hand, does something a little different. I guess it's because it's 8 o'clock. Let us just go ahead and change our daytime, our nighttime to daytime mode. And how did our headlight change, you wonder? Well, let's go back to the front of the train. You can just kind of see the little bit of a difference in our headlamps right there. Locking the doors and shipping us out. Where are we going next? Holy cow, what? Look at that guy go. Anyways, where are we going next? We're going to Slough. That is probably not going to happen for, I don't know, what, five times, five miles, eight miles? Somebody tell me. The doors are locked. Come on, I said lock the doors. I heard the door beep. You're kidding. You're kidding. It didn't lock the doors. What the heck? My train is broken. This is just dumb. We're going to be ultra late now. I'm going to have to get up out of my seat and do this myself. That's just going to be the bottom line. Close the door, please. Well, folks, our train is officially broken. It says proceed to single with indicate, but it won't let me go because my thing is completely broken. So let's go ahead and turn this back off again. And we're going to turn this back on again. And maybe my, maybe my doors will finally work properly like they're supposed to. I don't know. But I know, all I know is that broke. Are you kidding me? The door's shut now? What the heck? I hit a locked door. That's dumb. Lock both doors. Wait, are you telling me the opposite? Wait, which doors are, which door's broken? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. The wrong doors are what in the world train? I don't understand you. I just don't understand you. Are you telling me both of the doors were left open? This is why I was having problems. That's just dumb. I don't get it. We weren't late before. We are definitely late now. <laughs> We're supposed to be there right now, but that's okay. We have 5,000 AP. We're at least at the halfway point. Slough is kind of roughly the halfway point between Reading and London Paddington. So this means we're probably gonna get our 10,300 points. Folks, why did they opt to deal with the scrapyard and get rid of it? Where the scrapyard was located was considered a visual impediment and an environmentally destructive thing. Both of them were so intrusive that they wanted to junk it and create some modern building that made it look like a nicer looking depot facility. And honestly, just putting anything but a scrapyard would just make it a nicer looking depot to facility. So that's the point of why they are doing what they're doing over at Chipley. I should probably say this now while we're going to slow down anyways. The reason you don't see dynamic weather here on the Great Western Express or even in Sandpatch is because dynamic weather didn't come out at least until Train Sim World 3. So it's not until Train Sim World 3 games, at least the DLCs, that you won't be able to see dynamic weather. And so it's kind of important to know this, that some of the features that you see in Train Sim World 3, Train Sim World 4, probably by now Train Sim World 10, uh, the reason you don't see these things is because they only exist in the game that they're in. And unless they take the time to remaster the Great Western Express, which I cross my fingers and hope they do, because this is actually, although it's, the, although it's a fairly straight line route, it's a fairly good route and I'm enjoying driving this. It's got some challenges. It's got some things that I don't really care for, but it's definitely fun one way or another. Oh my God, we're not going to make it this time. We're going too fast. Are we going to make it? I don't know. All right, full stop coming up in 30 yards. And from here, we should be able to make our stop as intended. And right about there, that is good enough. Let's unlock our left doors and let's see if we can get our folks out this time on the proper side of our train. There it goes. I want to make sure this door shuts this time. All right, let's lock the left side doors. Why am I this close to this train? I don't think anyone's ever taken the time to notice how dirty the train gets sometimes. Like, uh, people complain that the train's too tiny and there's no dirt or specks on the train. But then nobody ever failed to... Nobody, nobody took the time to look at the front of the train and realize that the train's actually more, more dirty than it looks. Because if you think about it, all the bugs and stuff are hitting the front of the train. In fact, if I look very carefully, you can even see dirt on the windows and everything. 
In fact, you should be able to see something pretty similar depending on where you look because you can see sort of like the the paint here as the sun hits it, it eventually fades away a little bit of the paint and you can see some of the dirt on the windows and whatnot. But the dirt starts to get progressively less so as you go back into the middle car. The middle car should have the least amount of dirt and should be like the shiniest of the bunch. But as you go to the top, you could kind of see the scrape marks of the dirt and everything. So the trains accurately do model dirt and do it very well, honestly. We got four miles to West Drayton, give or take. Did you know, and unless you were on board this train, which I doubt you were, unless you were one of 13 other people to join you on the train, there was a wedding that was performed on a train. Why? Because the wedding happened from London Paddington to Swansea. A couple originally met on a train, a Great Western Railway train of, of all things. They commuted by train to date each other. They shared their first kiss on the train and eventually decided to get married aboard the Great Western Railway train itself. Now, this is not something that happened to everybody, but they actually held their entire wedding ceremony on board a train. And it was a very special commemorated and dedicated Great Western train that was just for them that rolled from London Paddington Station to Swansea. The entire ceremony from wedding vows, family photos, three course meal, witch beaches, and everything all took place on said journey. And a couple, both of them from Farm Cove near Gofoyt Deray, I can't even say these words, but you guys know what I mean. The couple from Farncombe near Guilford Teray decided to get married on board because the locomotive, in a sense, played a big part in their life. These people originally met in 2016 on board a Great Western Railway train from Wolkenham to Reading as they traveled for their first date together. They had, of course, like I said, their first kiss on the train and used their service to visit and date each other. Initially, the, the two planned to include a small nod to the operator in their wedding because they pretty much had the same operator over and over again. But so they reached out to Great Western Railway and they said, hey, can we, you know, do a centerpiece or something for a wedding table? You know, we just want to commemorate the operator who was instrumental in making our life happen. And Great Western Railway, not only did they not give them a centerpiece, they did something completely different. It's just impressive what they did. They basically said they had, they actually, the, the lady getting married got the opportunity to get her hair and makeup done in Queen Victoria's Lounge on Platform 1 at Paddington Station, while the guy getting married got ready in the gold Great Western, ex Great Western Railway boardroom. Why did my game freeze up? Oh my god, I'm doomed. My game is frozen. What has happened here? Whoa, hello. That's insane. We're gonna have to pause this. Well, folks, this is Koi from the future slash the past. We are literally back outside chasing another networker, Toboro, just after leaving Reading Station. As you can see the, from the marker there, we're going back to Twyford yet again. This time I got out really fast, so I'm on the roll here. I'm going to meet you guys just outside of Slough. I don't know what happened, but the game crashed. I got a crash report. I'm like, what in the world? Why would you crash now? That's just dumb. But anyways, we're going to keep this game rolling, and maybe I'll just keep this long enough just so you can kind of watch the two network or turbo cheat each other. It's obvious I'm going to be winning because I'm going straight. So we will meet you guys on the other end. Alrighty, folks. So I am back. <laughs> I'm like just outside of Slough and I don't exactly know what happened. I pulled up the task manager just in case because I was like, did I run out of memory? I don't think I did. My computer shouldn't run out of memory, especially doing this, uh, especially if I was on the outside cam and stuff. There's no way I should have ran out of memory playing this. At least not this old game. Maybe the, maybe one of the newer ones, but not the old one. But yeah, so something had happened and the game crashed and I wonder if it had to do with a bunch of glitches and whatnot. But if you look at my time, you'll see it just outside of eight o'clock. So we're back in nighttime mode with the headlights again. So we're gonna be turning that back on to daytime mode once I pull into Slough in about a mile. But for now, we're gonna try to make this stop at about 400 yards. What I've been doing is I've been not really speeding through, not at all, but I wanted to at least get back here as fast as I could. This is actually how I got here at eight o'clock rather than getting here at 8, 10, 8, 15, whatnot. Um, but I was basically speeding through and I would try to do my best to stop at the station. Then I kind of overshot a couple of stations, but I didn't want to worry about that because I know there's going to be more attempts to overshoot the station as best as we can. Good job, guy. Get out of the way. 
Just here we go. See, there's an attempt to overshoot the station right there. It is like on target. Wow, that's just totally shocking. Yeah, so something you want to know in case, actually, because it's eight o'clock now and the lights have turned off, let's go ahead and put this back on day mode here. And something to notice here is the door interlock button actually does work. If you notice, the fault here is technically blue. But it shows, it shows up as white when it's lit and then the other side is red. So when the door is open, the interlock does turn on and then the train door close button actually does turn on as well. And so it's really neat to see these three lights light up. Or actually, these four lights light up. So watch what happens when I close the door. So I'm going to go ahead and put my throttle down here for a second. So we're going to lock the left side door. You can see the door interlock thing has shut up as well as these lights. Once the train door closes completely, you'll see this light shut off as well. It's really neat to see that there. Our next stop is West Drayton. We're just gonna go ahead and put throttle seven all the way. By the way, because of me trying to like rush my way over here and just do as best I could, not only am I leaving mostly on time, but I've also got another network or turbo, at least one station ahead of us. So I have to just be careful of that as I head into Reading itself or London Paddington itself. I forgot what direction we're even going now. I think we're heading toward London Paddington. I just have to be careful with that guy because at some point when he gets down a little ways and he's going to be heading towards the final stops, at that point, we're going to have the issue of him slowing down a bit more. We're going to have a bunch of yellow lights. So I got to remember that piece. For the couple that got married on the Great Western Express and where they got ready in terms of the Queen Victoria Lounge and the um, old office and whatnot, that particular area was the place in Paddington that still remained after the Second World War. Despite all the bombing, that was like the only part of London Paddington that actually stayed together and did not get destroyed. And so the couple found that just to be a really a unique and inspiring position to be in. It was really cool because their entire family boarded the train first and they had a crew and whatnot helping them walk down the aisle of the platform, so to speak. And they went on to the train itself and they had the minister already on the carriage and everything. And what was really cool, it's just the fact that this happened and they, they invited only 14 people to go on the train. This is all that Great Western Express was willing to do. Because you know, there's only so many seats in these, in these rail cars, right? You can only do so much here, right? You can't do too much with trying to have a wedding in, in cars like this. More than likely they did it on a, a, an HST rather than a network or turbo, but you know what I mean. The lady who got married, her father was actually a single man for the Southwestern Railway for 51 years. He actually had the opportunity to give his daughter away, which was really neat to get to see that there. And, oh my God, just things are beeping on me and I'm trying to honk the horns at the same time. And I'm trying to talk about certain things all at one time. The Great Western Express actually let them have photographs, three course meal in a Pullman dining car, along with speeches and a toast as the train passed through Berkshire, Wiltshire and Somerset. And the wedding guests all left for Cardiff and the, the newlyweds actually kept on going on their train all the way to Swansea where the Great Western Express actually set up a hotel for them to stay for the night. With us coming into West Drayton, we're kind of slow ourselves down just enough so that way we can stop perfectly there. You can see that crane. It looks so cool in the in the misty fog here. It's kind of cool to see that. It's very noisy out here, unfortunately, because of all the stuff that's going on. And I don't think I lost memory. I don't think that was my issue. It just feels like that was the issue. But I think something happened with the game. And it happened to be with the glitching of the doors and stuff like that. They had to have set it off. I might actually miss this platform. Oh, my God. Lady, you're going to get run over. Pay attention to what's going on behind you. Get off the line. There we go. Thank you. As we go, we're going to be coming to a complete stop. Oh my god, we're going to miss the stop. We did it. We're still moving. Yes, uh, ha, ha. this is the best way to go. Four, three, two, one. And this is where we're going to actually stop. Right about here. That is perfect. Mm. Unlocking the left doors. We are not... Oh, oh my god, I'm early. That is insane. My first game, mm. I was late. And now I am early. And it's all because of what I did to rush my way there without talking. And it was because I was talking and doing the whole setup that caused me to be late. Isn't that right, folks? It is not your fault, but as usual, definitely like and subscribe and leave me comments if you're appreciating this railway journey. I try to do my best with this. 
Um, we try to have fun as we go along, and I like discovering the unique stuff that happens on rail lines and whatnot. Although the Great Western Express is a very straight line route that goes between London Paddington and Reading, you can at least have some imagination, like going to Cardiff and going to Swansea and all that other good stuff. So why not, right? Have a good time, folks. Let's go and head out to our next destination. With the doors locked, we are headed out to Hayes and Hollington, only 2.3 miles away. From there, all we got left is Ealing Broadway and finally London Paddington. And what we do have to worry about is where that Networker Turbo is. It is currently sitting in Ealing Broadway. So that Networker Turbo is going to have to pretty much speed its way over to London Paddington. And I have no idea how it's going to do. All I know is I'm going to get slammed by Reds and more than likely I might end up having to wait for this Networker Turbo. Once the Networker Turbo gets moving, we will see if we can actually pace him the rest of the way to London Paddington. It's just truly ironic that I got lucky here and I actually started this route pretty much out the gate and got myself ahead of my original time earlier. I was at least 10 minutes late. I was expecting to be even more late. Now I'm wondering, will I get to London Paddington early? It's possible because I got two minutes and two miles, so it's entirely possible I can do it. Let's see what we can do, folks. The goal with the speed up is to try to aim. What the heck, buddy? You can't pass me. I'm trying to have a conversation about going faster. Anyway, the goal with the speed up is to try to aim for one mile. Go as fast as you can at least until you hit that mile and then lay off the throttle. And that's what I was not doing in my previous run. I was actually cutting off the throttle like one and a half miles because I was a little scared about the snow. But it turns out the snow is not too bad. I did overshoot a couple platforms in this round, but it didn't really count too badly against me. I do got all these yellow lights and stuff that I got to deal with because I know that network turbo just left the platform. So we are at least in a good position. I'm going to try to at least hit 60. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and back off. That should be fine. There we go. We're going to go ahead and start backing off now. And then all I have to do is wait till that number starts dropping and then put on break one. And then from there, we should be able to slow down. All right, we're about 500 yards from Hayden Harlington. We're going to have an AWS go off any second now. I know it's around here somewhere. I don't know where the plates are specifically, but it's around here somewhere. And it's only because I got the yellow light up ahead of me that is going to beep at me at some, never mind, the, the light just changed. I see it now. It went from yellow to green, so we're totally okay. Just going to do it on the next one. But yeah, so what we're going to do is try to slow us down just enough to stop at Hayes and Hollington, pick up our patenter, then straight shot ourselves out to London Paddington. In fact, I am just like barely second late. So there is a really good chance I might actually make it to London Paddington early enough to catch the train at the station at the right time. So this may be the first time a Networker Turbo can finally be early to London Paddington. I am not entirely sure. I did learn something interesting that you can open the doors while you're in the middle of the stop. It's actually kind of interesting how that works out. The doors do open and sometimes if you open it too early, you end up with the issue of the door jamming up and getting stuck. And then I said, you have to unlock the doors again, but hey, what do you do, right? But at least we got the people out. It's really unfortunate that it says close the doors by 8, 13, and 37 seconds. So once you hit that button, it still says load but that passengers. If only that icon wasn't there, it would be so much better. Alrighty, folks, we got Networker Turbo coming into the station at Ealing Broadway. As we are about to leave our station, we might as well hop on on the outside cam and watch this all play. Oh, never mind. I'm not at Ealing Broadway. Where the heck am I? Oh, my God. Anyways, we're going to Ealing Broadway. I thought we already did this. I guess we're at Hayden and Ellington. Well, never mind. We got one more station stop then. For some reason, I thought there was just this, and then we we're going to London Paddington. I guess not. That's just not how it plays. I'll eat the good news for my AP scores. I'm at 9,974. I thought there was only one stop left, and I was like, oh, gosh, am I not going to get the score now? But it turns out I am, because there's at least one stop to worry about. This, this is good. I got the sun coming out, so this is nice. It's starting to reflect off of some things. It's going to be blinding me here in the cab and all that good stuff. But at least I got my genuine reading light that doesn't do anything in this train, so everything is hunky-dory, right? For this astute subscribers and video watchers and all that, you'll probably notice I keep getting yellow lights up ahead, and it's all because of that network or turbo that's also stopping at Ealing Broadway before they stop at London Paddington. So we gotta, we've just gotta pace them as best we can, and at some point we may run into them on the way into London Paddington, and we'll just have to work around that, folks. Yeah, unfortunately, we're actually early to Ealing Broadway, which is great news for me. I didn't expect the Networker Turbo could be early. I've been late pretty much almost every game I played, including the first one that was all glitchy. But this one seems to be doing all right, which I'm kind of impressed by. 
we do have to hit that red light up ahead, so I do hope I can stop in 900 yards because it's going to suck if I speed through that light in danger. I'm going to hope for the best, though, that I don't have a lot to worry about here. I really just hope for the best that I could just kind of sail right on without completely stopping. That would be the ideal way of stopping at Ealing Broadway here, if I could just kind of coast on through, but I don't think that's going to happen, folks. All right, we have 200 yards for the single. Come on, single. Come on, you little network of turbo up ahead. Get moving. I want to get going, but you guys are just like holding me up here. This is just not fun. I don't want to be stopped here. I really don't. This is my own fault for being early. Look, I'm so early that I'm supposed to be at the stop and they're preventing me from stopping. That's dumb. You guys are preventing me from stopping in my own station. Why are you doing that to me? Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're just gonna have to stop here. We don't have a choice. I don't want to pass a single of danger. I'm gonna be doomed if I do. And it would be dumb to kill this game with like 40 yards and then just be like, oh, pass single danger. Oh my God, you single, you suck. So you wanted me to stop on purpose. You wanted me to stop on purpose. That was messed up. I could have probably kept coasting. Fine, we're gonna wheel slip our way into it. That's how upset I am about you, single. So I can't believe I'm late to Ealing Broadway because the single and the networker turbo in front of me is the one that's late. Who knew? So I don't know if I'm actually gonna pass this. I'm a little I'm a little curious if I'm actually gonna pass the thing. I might actually go overshoot it just a touch. Oh wait, maybe not, maybe not. Oh, I did overshoot it just by an inch. Just by an inch, just only six yards. That's not bad, honestly. Unlocks the left doors. All the passengers are walking all in the same direction to the end of the platform for whatever reason. They're all headed that way. When the street is over there, maybe they're all trying to get to their next train. Who knows? But I would have thought you would just like, there is no way to get over here, is there? Unless you cross over the platform on that side. I guess that's right. But then how do you get to those two platforms? There's no real way to get over there either. There must be like an underground tunnel or something. Alrighty, Ooh. locking the doors for the last time, dropping our brakes down and throttling up at least to throttle three to get ourselves moving here. And we are finally headed to London Paddington, our last station for the day. We're supposed to be there at 829. We got a network of turbo that's also headed to London Paddington, which may cause us to be officially late to London Paddington, but we will see how this goes. In the meantime, grab a cup of joe like that guy did, grab a suitcase, wait for a train, and you will see me soon unless somebody falls on the tracks and cause a full station stop. Now, I will tell you that bridge is probably the reason why sometimes some trains get disrupted, and not just in trains in world, but in real life. There are actually sometimes people that get on these tracks for some mysterious reason and does cancel and disrupt services. So folks, if any of you go to the UK, and any of you try to get Great Western Railway, Please don't fall for any advertisement that said you can get a year's worth of travel for only $2, right? So keep in mind that there's people out there trying to scam people to buying these tickets for like $2 and they're fake Great Western Express tickets. Great Western, Ra it literally said something like the Great Western Railway is running a promotion offering all UK residents a gift card for a year for a year's worth of travel for about $2 by clicking the button below, which then it doesn't really go anywhere. And it just gives false information and it also collects data, which your data then gets stolen to use for other purposes. So beware that there are fake things like this. There's actually several of the things that have got out. So if you happen to ride the Great Western Railway and you're in the UK, please don't kick on these. Please pay for a full, please pay for a full price ticket. It's the best way to go. You won't get your data scammed or nothing like that. All right, folks, I feel like I have a real chance of getting this network or turbo early. There's a 50 zone coming up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that one mile as best as I can, slow my train down as best as I can, and then ease into London Paddington as best as I can. So we're going to see if we can do this. What in the world? Look at this, a crossbar. What in the world is that crossbar? It probably means we're going to be shifting all the way to the far end of our platform. We probably should slow down to 40 because of that crossbar. But yes, it does mean we're gonna be shifting pretty much all the way to the right. That's just a single that most people wouldn't normally see in any other day. But yeah, you can kind of see how we're shifted over a little bit. Folks, if you've been enjoying this rail trip, please definitely give me a like and subscribe. I definitely appreciate all the comments, especially some of the recent ones I've gotten. It's been really a pleasure to talk with you guys and, and to see that like some really cool stuff's happening here. Folks, if you like this, please definitely give me a like and subscribe. I definitely appreciate your commentary and it's been really good to hear from you guys about, you know, what you guys thinking about this rail line. For me, what I've noticed in the past when I was looking at Great Western Express or even Dan Patch, I was like, there's no really good videos on these old, old trains. 
and how to get the medals and stuff like that. So I might as well, you know, play a little small part and try to help people get the medals that they want to get for this browse and stuff and kind of, you know, walk them through the route and kind of see what potential glitches and issues you might run into as you go along. As you can tell, my game crashed on me. I still don't know why my game, not even over memory or anything like that, I have a comfortable margin. I checked myself. It's just unusual that this happened, and I don't even actually know why it did this. But, you know, it's nice to know that not only can it happen to you, but it can happen to me too. So I'm not invaluable here. In the meantime, we got 800 yards to make a full stop at London Paddington, and we also got to get down the 25 miles an hour. Plus, I have 28 seconds to officially make it to my final stop. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but we will see how close I can get to on time. This is the most on time networker turbo I've managed to get in the entire four chapters I've been playing Great Western Express here. You guys did catch that little overspeed I did. That's probably the only overspeed I had in the entire mission between the first game and the second game. So whatever, I can live with that. I have 13,000 APM good. This is the comfortable margin to get platinum points, but all it takes is driving your networker turbos well, managing your networker turbos, and being really good about taking the time to drive your train. Obviously, it's time to stop, so we're going to have to slow my train down just a touch more. I'm over by like about a minute, but this otherwise is a perfect good stop. In platform 13 of all platforms, what a cursed platform this is to go stop here. I wish I knew that ahead of time because, oh my God, this is a cursed platform. This really does stop like right at the end of the line. There's nothing after this. Oh my God, we really do have to stop the train or we're going to get screwed by the end of this whole line. What a cursed platform, man. All right, unlock the doors. That's all we got to do. I didn't realize we had to also load passengers. Well, who knew? Well, let's go out in camera eight since we're hanging out here and we might as well see how cursed this platform really is. Is this me? No, it is not. What happened to me? Where am I? There I am. I'm like hidden in the back wall. These are the two extra platforms that they had to build on purpose because they needed just a couple extra rails and they had to put a wall here of all things so nobody can see what's going on back here. It's almost like you're, you know, peeping over the fence kind of thing. Yeah, you know what's going to happen, folks. If they ever build a platform 15, 16, they're just going to cut into the wall on this side and look at that. What do you know? There's another platform over here that hides on the other end. Actually, this happened to go in another direction for another train. So there really is a platform 1516. Who knew this was a possible thing? So one day they may actually open those platforms up. All right, folks, time to see our final score. You probably saw me turn on the DRA right at the tail end, beating minus 32.5, but that's okay. That was the only speeding event I had. Otherwise, the full platinum medal, we did really well in two games. This was supposed to take me one hour. Apparently it took me one and a half hours. Not because I was doing so well, but because my game crashed. Thanks, game, for crashing. And with that, as usual, like, subscribe, leave me a comment, and we will catch you in the next one, which I believe we drive an HST next. Bye, guys. At the same time we are, this is fantastic. A little bit of train break there just to kind of boost us in. Hi there, folks. <laughs> Good to see you all. Nice to see we're pulling in at roughly about the same time. In fact, they probably should have been pulled in. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. No, 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 stop, 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 no, no.